Okay. Oops. So uh, thanks. Uh, this is a virtual uh, meeting for the TLS working group focusing on ECH. Um, as I just mentioned, this session is being recorded. Uh, we're experimenting. If you want to leave your video on, we can try that out and see how it works. Um, but make sure you're uh, muting your microphone unless you're speaking just to minimize the extraneous noise. Uh, we'll try to use the queuing mechanism, although with a smaller group of people here, we may not have to be quite as formal, but uh, I'll try to monitor the queue and maybe uh, Chris can as well. Uh, there are blue sheets. The Code EMD link is in uh, the uh, chat, uh, which you may have access to. Sometimes that doesn't, if not, it's on the slides or think in the meeting announcement as well, or the should have sent in the meeting announcement. Um, and if somebody's on Jabber and can relay uh, any questions from Jabber, that would be great. Yeah, Joe, unfortunately it's on, are oh, the slides sent out? Yeah. The slides are in the, the uh, meeting. Uh, well, what one, uh, they've just been posted to the blue sheet, uh, to, to the chat. Uh, yes, good. Because the problem is that the, you can't click on the slides that are being displayed, and the and they don't they don't have the URL that you have the, the subject. But I got it. Thanks. Yeah, and the slides should be in the meeting materials for this, but they may not be obvious because how to get to that. Um, I apologize for not including that information in the announcement. So um, hopefully people can do that. Here's the note. Well. Uh, for uh, folks that are, uh, you, you've all seen this before, I'm sure. So just make sure you adhere to the best practices. Uh, and we're here to talk about uh, ECH. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the GitHub pages and then go on mute and listen to Chris tell me where, what, what uh, issues we should be looking at. Cool, can you uh, start with 274? All right. Um, so the, the summary, if you've not gone through this issue, uh, is basically as follows. Um, right now in the current design, uh, clients are required to use trial decryption to figure out whether or not the inner or outer client hello was accepted, um, which is a problem uh, for a number of reasons. Perhaps paramount is that it complicates the quick TLS interface um, in a needless way. Um, so ideally clients have a way or the, the TLS stack has a way to determine which of the client hellos was chosen without consulting quick um, uh, during any part of the protocol. So uh, there are a number of options here. Um, option 0, 1, 2, 3, 3 prime. Um, I, for, I forget how many options we have now, uh, but we seem to be converging at least on one of them. Um, so if you could, I think if you scroll all the way to the bottom, Joe, uh, it might link uh, I think Chris summarized the current status. Okay, yes. Um, so th there are the three proposals, um, each with a backing PR. Um, the one that seems to be gaining the most uh, momentum is uh, uh, 287, number three here, um, which adds an explicit signal of confirmation uh, by reusing some bytes in the server hello random. Um, this seems to be okay from a, from a cryptographic perspective after consulting with people who are involved in the proofs. Um, uh, and um, I guess, uh, Chris, do you wanna say anything more about the particular design or the change? Oh, I don't think so. I, I mean, I don't, I, what, what, like like uh, from, a, from a proof perspective or, um, or, or something else. If anything came to mind, I guess. Um. Yeah, so the idea is basically to provide an explicit signal of acceptance so um, that you don't have to that you don't have to do trial decryption. So what happens is um, 
the the client sends an ECH extension in its client hello inner, which has this eight byte random value that it, it expects to see in the server's uh, um, server hello random. Um, so if it sees that sequence of, of of bytes, then it presumes acceptance. Otherwise, it presumes rejection or the server doesn't support it. So the the idea of this is basically to to stick out as little as possible while resolving this trial decryption problem. Um, from a from an analytical perspective, it doesn't seem to do that much damage because we're just using eight bytes. An active attacker could, of course, control these eight bytes um, and and um, and increase the probability of a um, of a of a, a server random colliding with a previous server random. But uh, there are still twenty four bytes of entropy, so this risk seems uh, seems pretty pretty minimal. Yeah, and the probability of false positives, that is, um, the, the eight bytes, for example, um, or act, act, the client accidentally interpreting that as rejection rather than acceptance or whatever, um, is like small enough such that like TCP failures happen more often. So uh, I don't think we're really concerned about that. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, Ecker, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think this is probably, uh, uh, we spent a lot of time on this, obviously. I think this is probably the best approach. Um, I have some complaints about the way it's spelled, which I can, like, um, put in comments. Um, specifically, I don't think having two variants of the, of the client hello um, extension is a good idea. We should have two different code points. But um, I think this is a fine a fine general approach. Um, and I just, I think the probably the next thing is if people agree on the general approach, we should, get, we should just iterate the PR and get it right. Great. Does anyone object to the proposal? I guess let me... Question. Okay, cool. Um, that's the case. Yeah, Chris, let's just work through the issues. Um, any uh, uh, comments that happen to come up on the pull request? Um, yeah, Jonathan, uh, do you want to come to the mic and ask your question? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was thinking about this a little while ago, and the server could, in an unencrypted extension, send back um, a blob, like a number. And the indication of acceptance would be it would compute the whatever key for the inner client hello, uh, hash it with some label. And that would be its response. And otherwise, if it was rejecting or if it didn't, if it couldn't decrypt, it would just put random data in this unencrypted extension. Um, and that would mean you end up with uh, the external observer can't determine whether or not you have the server actually accepted or rejected. It can tell if the server doesn't support, but it can tell that anyway. It can tell if the server accepted or rejected. And otherwise, uh, but it can't. But the external observer can't tell. Sorry, the external observer can't tell whether accept or reject, but the clients can. The problem with that is that people who don't do ECH at all will not have will not put that extension in. And yeah, so the present so the presence or absence of that extension is a problem. We we've, we've well, if I understand this correctly, this proposal, um, we already have that problem. Uh, no, we this is not that problem because you cannot distinguish between the protocol transfer whether ETH was in use um, or even supported. The, the only way you can find if ETH is supported is by probing, which is which is somewhat more inconvenient. Well, actually, yeah, we could do the same thing. We could uh, smuggle it in the server hello random as well, actually, because that that actually followed the same protocol. That's that's what this is. Oh, OK, sorry. I didn't realize that this was blinded. I thought this was an explicit signal. Nope. Um, this is uh, taking um, basically a secret value that the, the client sends in the inner client hello and putting it in the server hello random. And from the, the minimal perspective, that's not actively probing to figure out whether ECH is, ECH is supported. It just looks like any other random eight bytes. So I actually, um, 
I do think Jonathan's onto something here a little bit, um, which is um, that well, I can't remember what the issue number is when we get to ECH nonce. Um, uh, if we get rid of ECH nonce, um, then um, then we can just have the low eight bytes be a digest of client random, but client random has to be random anyway. And then we can dispense with the signal in the client hello. Yep, good point. Um, so I mean, it's, it's just a trivial optimization, but it's, it's, it makes life it makes life somewhat simpler. Yep, and less code points. Um, I mean, you could echo it too, but echo, but echoing is visible. Whereas I just, um, uh, I actually, I, well, uh, fuck, it can't it can't just be a digest because that's a problem. I have to yeah, I have to key it somehow. So maybe that won't work. By the way, I think I think we know like what are the properties of the thing that need to go in the server hello random, um, and we can like like shed on like the details later on potential optimizations, but. Um, Uh, ben? Uh, just to Jonathan's point, I wanted to say that one of the design considerations here is um, is split mode, where the server hello is constructed by an entity that does not have the HPKE private key. So uh, that's part of the reason why this proposal is structured this way. Oh, yeah, I was actually thinking that you would use just the key derived from the TLS keys, the inner TLS key schedule. So it would just be another, like an, an export key. No, oh, I mean, yeah, an export key. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that'd be quite difficult because, um, because given that you're probably quite possibly offering different client, hello, different, different, um, key shares in the two client hellos, then you're effectively having to try to decrypt at that point. So, um, that's just trying to do two different homens. Like, I mean, I, I, I think it's, this is certainly, this is only an idea worth iterating on, but after, after like, after like five minutes of one full start, I'm less confident we can make it work. <laughs> um, um, but if someone, I mean, I certainly, I, I like, I don't like the, I don't love the, I don't love the thing in the client hello. So if we can find to make it rid of it. I'm certainly in favor of doing that. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, unless there's any other objections, uh, Chris, let's just work forward, uh, closing out this PR. Um, incorporating all the suggestions from everyone. So uh, again, the, the PR is linked here, number 287. If you have specific comments on how it's spelled, like shedding, whatever, uh, please take a look at your comments there, your feedback there. We'd like to close on this one soon because um, it's one of the big things that's blocking um, implementation going forward. All right. Um, yeah, and we'll close out the other two. Thank you. Uh, Joe, can we go back? Um, actually, I think it'd be good to talk about the nonce thing yet uh, next. So number 253, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thanks, Ben, for filing this. Um, the, the ECH nonce sort of carried over from uh, previous incarnations of design uh, back when it was just ESNI. Um, uh, and it, it had a, a, a valid use at the time in preventing this client reaction attack. Um, but given how the design has morphed uh, lately and the fact that the inner client hello presumably has a different secret random value than that which is in the outer client hello, um, it may be redundant and uh, we might consider removing it uh, rather than clarifying its existence. Um, there are a couple of caveats here. Um, in particular, it does need to remain secret in order for this to be like effective. That's a key property of the ECH nonce right now. Like if it's revealed, then this reaction attack is potentially possible. Um, and there may be servers that somehow leak, you know, bits of the client hello, um, I, I, the client hello random, or like maybe even other extension values like the ECH nonce. Um, so uh, if we're reasonably sure that the A, the random values from the inner outer client hello are different, um, that is independently generated random. Um, and that the inner hello client random is never leaked uh, by any entity who's actually, who has uh, visibility into it, um, then we may be able to remove it after discussions uh, with Karthik and some others. Um, so, Ecker? Uh, oh, sorry, Chris. Hi, so I just wanted to make people aware of the PR for this. Um, so this PR removes the ECH nonce and it clarifies the uh, server, the, the client behavior around generating the, the, the inner client hello random. Does it also say anything about the secrecy of the random value? 
Well, so the secrecy is 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 it's encrypted, so that's that's supposed to provide the secrecy. But yeah, so there, I I changed, <clears throat> I, I changed the, um, I I updated the, the 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 discussion in security considerations about this client reaction attack to say that the secrecy of the client hello the inner client hello random prevents that attack. Um, I guess we should all you know we should all agree we should all try to agree that that's actually the case. Um, <laughs> worth talking about yeah so um uh yeah i mean i think uh, chris and i were talking about this chris wood and i were talking about this morning the reason we kept this um was because there was some fear that servers might leak um decline hello random for instance a ticket um so um, and bear in mind that like the the, the ticket doesn't the ticket the ticket does not currently have a secrecy um a requirement um the um uh uh, so, I mean, like, for instance, you might, I mean, I don't know why you do this, but you might like basically embed the entire client hello in the, in the, in the, in the ticket. Um, um, and, um, and obviously if that were the case, then you, um, that won't work, uh, obviously if that were the case, then this would not work. Um, but with that said, if you leak the client hello in the ticket and you leak the, uh, um, the, um, the, uh, the only way this like really is a problem is if for some unknown, So, um, Ecker, you were breaking up quite a lot. Um, but what I think I heard you say is that, um, if you expect a, a server to leak the client hello random, it's presume it's plausible that that same server would also leak potentially other information about the extensions, including the ECH nodes. Yes, that's what I was saying. Right. Is it better now? Okay. Yeah, it's better now. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the I'm not. A... On the server side. Yeah, I don't know about others, but I couldn't follow what he just said. Yeah, I'm sure. Just turn up the video. Sure. Sorry. No, I don't know. Is that any better? Seems yeah. to be. Okay, yeah. so what I was saying was that um, given that we're hypothesizing servers which have which have unknown behavior um, and leak parts of things, the only way to fix that is by pulling stuff out of the key schedule and shoving it back in. And we can't do that without making major modifications, to, like the, the, the communication between the, the, the facing and the backend server. Right. Thank you. That came through clearly. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess the question on the table is: um, Do we believe that um, it, it, with this sort of change, where in which we make it clear that the the two, two, two client hello randoms need to be different, and that the inner one needs to remain secret, um, whether or not that's sufficient, um, or we need something a bit stronger? Um, I think the question is: How long does it need to be secret? Um, it needs to be secret. It needs to be unpredictable to the adversary uh, prior to the client consuming the server's um, the the server's first flight. I I mean yeah. Um, I don't really. I don't. I don't know if that's a useful distinction. Um, but. Perhaps it is, um, but yes, it, it like it cannot be revealed up before that point, certainly. Um, so I guess, yeah. As a resumption, does that break things? Why? Well, why would it be revealed during resumption? No, no. If they, if if you 
leak the client hello and then subsequently the connection is torn down and then there's a resumption does that change the security properties i'm just trying to think of cases where you might end up consuming the client the server first flight later than you think you will um not sure offhand uh ben uh ben schwartz i'm not sure i follow all this but it seems like anything that leaks the client hello random in session tickets or a resumption also creates a pretty severe linkability problem that we would probably want to prohibit anyway. So if we do end up with some uh, hack where server hello random is derived from client hello random, then that of course has to be to client hello random has to be a secret in perpetuity. Uh, right. So actually, I meant independent of of anything to do with encrypted client hello. If uh, if session resumption is um, is revealing the the client hello random in clear text, then an observer now can can link the resumptions back to the original session. Uh, agreed. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Uh, which trying. seems like, which seems like a you know a, a problem bad enough that, that we might want to prohibit that if we're worried that it might be a, a, a behavior in the wild. I agree. I was just trying to make a separate point. My mistake. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, so does anyone have any objections to this, uh, I guess, proposal going forward with the added clarity? What proposal? Two independently generated random values, uh, language around the inner one saying that it must be kept secret. As long as that doesn't prohibit us from saying, sorry, Jonathan, wasn't, as long as that doesn't prohibit us from coming up with a better design. There is no better design, Jonathan. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, two things derived from the same secret are guaranteed to be independent. So, sorry, guaranteed with different labels are you asking like are, are you suggesting a, a, a way to generate the two random values yeah, yeah. oh yeah. um i mean uh i mean it seems like an implementation detail that um but I mean, you, sure. can admit, you can do it without having to have three sorry if you derive it from three different labels then you can have one that remains secret because it's never transmitted, uh, and one that's the outer and one that's the inner. For example. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's. Th this seems like a detail of how one writes when it's PRNG. Yeah, I would agree. But I think in most cases, like most TLS stacks, would just like call random bytes and take whatever output and just shove it in the client hello random. I mean, that's the ones I'm familiar with. That's what they do, and this would be no different, I would imagine. So I, I think Jonathan, an implementation could choose to do what you're suggesting. Um, I don't think it just need. I don't think it needs to be spelled out in the specification. Um, I mean, yeah. If we don't trust the client's RNG, then I, I think there are worse issues. Christian, um, do you want to comment at the mic regarding 287? I, I know um, it's we kind of moved past that, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, 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 I was looking at that. I was going to add a, a me too, yes, I like it to uh, 287. And then I think I have an attack against that. And the attack is. Suppose a man in the middle uh, observes the client hello, forwards it to the server, receives the server's hello, blocks it, and sends and creates its own response as if he was a server responding to the outer initial client hello. 
but does copy the first eight byte of the server hello random into its own server hello random. Then I think you have an oracle is that the, uh, the client will uh, see the, if the client is doing ECH, it will react to the eight bytes and try to use the, uh, um, the, the ECH uh, secret and the connection will fail. And thus the server can see that uh, because the connection doesn't progress, the client was, and the server were doing ECH. Yeah, um, I don't think this design is specifically uh, intended to prevent that sort of active attack. Um, I mean, there are certainly other ways to figure out whether or not a particular connection it makes use of ECH, um, depending on like what sort of capabilities you assume the, the on-path attacker to have and how much active uh, probing or whatnot it's willing to do. Um, this is more uh, to prevent sort of uh, obvious like plain text filters uh, that might block ECH uh, on the presence of a clear text signal in the server hello. So my, my, my real concern there is that, um, I mean, the, the weakness in the design is that there is a copy of something in clear text in the first eight byte. So that means that it's observable by outsider and it can be used in a variety of replay attacks. And uh, I just draw one. That would not happen if the eight bytes were somehow constructed so that they could not be guessed by a third party. For example, if Cheng Ding, you know. But I mean, may maybe I'm just over concerned. I think it's good to uh, think these things through clearly. Um, uh, perhaps if you could. Articulate uh, the attack in a bit more detail on the either the issue or the pull request. Um, um, you further examine it there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, and thank you for raising it. Um, uh, Watson. Yeah, I'm just a little confused. Was that a because of the eight by? Is that about a two seven four or the one we're discussing now two fifty three where there's a concern about the attack? Uh, that was the previous one, I believe, two eighty seven. But Christian can correct me if I'm wrong. I... But that was about 287. Correct. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let, let's follow up on the, the PR there um, and think through that case just to make sure that there's no inherent problems. But um, yeah, thanks again for flagging it. Um, so back to this one that's open right now. It um, uh, doesn't look like there's any particular strong objections to it. Um, so uh, Chris, your PR is linked from this issue, right? Uh, I I will I'll I'll put an actual comment in it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Let's uh, similar to that one. Let's just uh review it and then move it forward. Um. And then close it out. And thanks again to Ben for filing um the issue. All right. Um. Number 264, please. Right, okay. Um, so uh, one of the details we lay on the spec is that um, endpoints must pad um, uh, parts of their uh, handshake flight in order to hide you know, metadata that would leak otherwise, like size certificate that might depend on the SNI um, or other things. Uh, we currently rely on record layer padding to do so, um, but as David lays out in the issue, uh, this could be problematic for quick implementations. Um, there's also a potential um, to do it with extensions on certain messages in the handshake, like you could add it, make an exception for padding being added to the certificate message or to EE -E or whatever. Um, uh, there, uh, there are some comments in here um, that suggest that doing it, uh, you, you're going down the extension route, or per, is perhaps not the best path um, uh, or best path. Uh, particularly if you consider what happens with certificate compression. Um, so I think the the proposal here is to add a new handshake message uh, that is specifically designed for to carry padding bytes. Um, 
and uh, the, the part of the uh, record layer that looks at the handshake message and dispatches it to uh, the state machine, similar to CCS, we just you know consume this padding message and drop it on the floor. Um, uh, unfortunately, David is not here uh, to speak to it, I don't think. Um, so uh, I wanted to, I guess, open the floor to see if uh, what people thought about this particular issue, uh, specifically if there are people here are um, involved in the quick side of things, like Christian, um, that would be good to know, uh, or it would be good to hear your feedback on this particular problem. Ecker? Yeah, I'm really not enthusiastic about adding a new, um, a, a new padding, <laughs> um, uh, a, a new padding message, handshake message. Um, uh, yeah, that seems like gross. Um, so uh, um, I guess I don't quite understand um, why we can't add all the padding in EE if we have to add padding. Um, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, I mean, that requires some recapitation, but the, uh, um, it's not like, it's, it's, it's not that the, the record boundaries are not, are not the, sorry, that the handshake message boundaries are not visible at the, uh, at the record layer at, at, on the wire. I guess, I mean, from the server's flight, it's, I, I guess I don't see an issue with it either. Um, I don't know if, like, the client doesn't have any. Well, that's true. Like that. Well, then uh, I'd rather add EE there. <laughs> um, um, because, like, you know, if, if the problem is that we, like, need to put things in other places, like the idea that we're going to add a, a new handshake message and when you use a state machine explicitly for the purpose of, like, saying nothing, like, does not work well for me. Can you elaborate on that? Is it just because it's... Um, it just it, seems, it, it seems like, it seems like, Extremely a, a point fix for Linz to have a generic solution. I see. Okay. Um, Nick. Uh, sorry, I added myself to the Q to comment that from the quick perspective, managing padding at the quick layer will be horribly complicated. So we need some sort of padding in the TLS layer. Um, I don't have strong opinions on where TLS puts that padding in. So what Ecker was suggesting um, of putting an E instead of in a new handshake message, I think sounds fine. Um, yeah. But we also, I don't, Chris, I don't understand why you would need to add client server or client server padding. Are you talking about the um, the client hello or about the uh, client certificate? The client certificate. Like, I I, I don't know. If, but like, that's not covered by SNI anyway, right? <laughs> Well, I, I'm imagining like a potential scenario where the, the client cert varies based on what the SNI is, sure. is. but sure. like, I don't know if that's actually the problem in practice. Well, but I, I mean, I guess, right, I mean, that's certainly true, but um, bear in mind that like, I mean, like lots of things are going to vary based on what server it is, right? Um, you know, once you're talking about like my message high traffic analysis, like what, you know, is the, is the, is the URI going to vary? So I don't think that's that helpful. Um, but in any case, um, so I, I think, yeah, I think uh, that, that's, that's not that. Like this seems like a separate problem. Um, um yeah, I, I I guess we could go to differing extremes here with how well, much. Well, I, mean, I, guess, I guess I guess let me point out that like the it seems like it seems the client certificate leakage has like much more serious problems than um than uh uh um. Uh, then with SNI, um, because you know you have multiple clients connecting to the same known server, and you're, and you're potentially leaking any of those. So it seems like if that's an issue, um, like that's a, that's a solution which can be detached from this particular problem. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, and like, like I, I whatever mechanism you happen to use to address the padding for ECH could probably be used to solve that particular problem as well. Be it like an extension somewhere on the client's flight uh, after EE or after. Um, the service fight or a handshake message. Like I, I too don't really have a strong preference um, as long as it's not in the record layer, uh, as Nick and David has pointed out. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a strong opinion, uh, Chris? I just wanted to mention the thing. One thing we're not talking about, which is definitely less of a risk than leaking the SNI, um, is there's a lot of there's a lot of things in the spec about don't stick out, like padding. To make sure, like on ECH rejection, you pad it. Like it's optional for non-ECH servers to pad to to uh, hide the fact that ECH rejection has happened. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how that concern relates to the the questions on the table. I just wanted to bring that up. Right. Uh, I, I think one more point. Um, you know, uh, David Ben points out that. Uh, um, 
the reason you can't do just a gener an extension of the certificate message is because the certificate compression draft, uh, you know, um, compresses the entire method. Exactly. But like we we could just pull that out of the RFC editor and fix that. I mean, if, it, if we decide that was the wrong answer, like we need to fix that. So, um, I, I, I guess I guess I'm not sure it is the right answer, but I guess what I'm saying is, if people think that's off the table because the document has been approved, that's not off the table. Uh, I forget where that document is currently. Oh, 48. Yeah. Okay. So. But I mean, so like, <laughs> uh, maybe the chair could put, could put press the pause button. Perhaps. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, that's that seems reasonable. I think we should press the pause button on that until we make sure we have a resolution to this. Yeah. Okay. I will push the pause button for uh, certificate compression. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Um, okay. So it sounds like in general, um, folks are not enthusiastic about doing this in the record layer. Uh, we need some way to do this uh, within TLS, um, particular mechanism TBD. Um, but all this is sort of like extra anyways. I mean, different implementations might go to different degrees of uh, how much padding they're willing to do to hide these things. Um, like padding is not required to make the protocol work. So I, I don't consider this a real blocker, but it's something we should figure out. Um, okay, anyone else have any other follow-up? Comments. Um, One thing is that if we should we should double check the draft to see if there's any must pads. I don't know that there are, um, but that's worth that's worth following up on just in case you know we don't actually you know if we don't actually if 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 yeah yeah basically if if uh, implementations do different things we still want to make sure that the standard they're standard compliant so um, it's worth coming through the spec I think. Yeah, agreed. Um, would you mind, uh, Chris, if you're in the issue right now, could you make a note of uh, what we just talked about? Basically, um, people are in favor of not record layer. Yep. Thank you. Um, all right, can we go to 263 next? Ben Schwartz, I, I just wanted to, uh, on the on the topic of uh, unsolicited padding extensions, I just wanted to ask, is there a way to um, to implement the client hello, the inner client hello padding using the unencrypted client hello padding extension, which would then be encrypted by ECH. Uh, yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think that if the client pads, so my thesis would be that the client pads with the standard padding extension and the server, um, then, and then we remove the restriction that the server can't add their own padding extension, and they put it in E, and then it's not unsolicited, and we're good to go. And then, the only, and then there's an edge case where the client doesn't pad, but the server wants to, but that's just dumb because, like the, you know, because this client was too lazy to pad, and the server padding is not going to help us. Um, so that's that, that. seems like the easiest solution to this problem. Um, yeah, I, I would like to find a good place for. I mean, to solve the. I mean, the separate problem of perhaps hiding uh, what the client cert is by the size. I would like to at least have an answer to that as well, even if it is orthogonal to this particular issue. Well, note that, yeah, I think that's, 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 that seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 um, I mean, but bear in mind that you could solve actually by having, that you can actually solve by having, a, by, by so I mean, that this is why the certificate compression thing is relevant, right? Because that you could solve by padding the certificate in certificate yeah. message and having the server and although unsolicited certificate extensions, I think, are, are forbidden, that this because that's in response to certificate request, you could you could have the extension there. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Um, well, with Ben putting pause on compression, uh, um, sorry to Victor and Alessandro if you're here. Um, uh, we can sort that out. Okay. Um, so uh, this next issue. Um, uh, Back in. Oh, right. So, um, uh, for the extension compression mechanism um, that we have in the spec right now, uh, there is this hash that's included of the what should be the effectively reconstructed client hello. Um, uh, and Chris is asking here whether or not that's actually uh, useful. Chris, do you want to elaborate? Yeah. So. From where I from where I stand, it seems to be redundant, at least insofar as um, if the client hello, if the outer extensions are manipulated, it's going to change the client hello inner. The client and, and backend server aren't going to agree on that value, so that's basically just inactive attack. That's what it amounts to. 
Um, but uh, Ecker pointed out this kind of, you know, kind of weird corner case where uh, there's, you know, you, you, you have these sort of, it's, 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 it's possible to come up with contrived examples of extensions that, uh, that kind of break the privacy of SNI. Um, and the, this, this mechanism, basically this, 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 uh, this binding of the outer extensions to the client hello inner prevents this attack. Um, so basically what we have is a strictly stronger security property for um, the client hello inner that's consumed by the backend server than what is usual for like TLS. Um, so I, you know, I'm not opposed to leaving the mechanism in there. Um, I would just, I thought it warranted discussion. Like, are there, are there more natural examples of extensions that would, for which this stronger security property would be useful? So I don't have a more natural example. Um, I think part of what happened here is that, you know, we found it so hard to reason about everything involving ECH that um, that I decided that when I that, that, that this was a sketchy enough kind of like um, uh, situation that uh, that that it was better to be err on the safe side. <laughs> I think is basically what happened here. That you know a lot of the, I mean basically we had a lot of problems with substitution of individual parts of the, of the inner hello and the advantage and so like and here, here's how you get to this point is you say look we've had problems with substituting inner parts to client hello and so now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the entire thing and bundle it in ECH and that provides both confidentiality and integrity for the entire thing and so like that's a good property and we agree we can analyze that easily and then you say okay but that's too big so how you compress it and so when you compress it you don't want to remove the property of having integrity for the entire thing and so that that that, that may, 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 means you need a binding between the inner and outer so i guess uh, unless we had a very uh, like this is a complicated enough system that it seems like like leaving the door open for obvious mistakes later is not a good idea so i don't i don't necessarily i don't I don't, this is kind of maybe nitpicky. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not really, I don't really have a strong opinion about this at this point. I think that though, um, basically, um, I don't know that it's providing additional integrity, but it's certainly, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, encryption with associated data. So, um, it's, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're, so, so basically what we have, what we need from the, uh, from the, from the encrypted client hello encryption mechanism is INDCCA security. And this amounts to an attack on the INDCCA security of the thing when you have associated data. So, um, the, what we're effectively, like what we're effectively in, endowing, HPKE with is public key encryption with associated data. Um, and whether that's necessary or not, I think depends on how you're, how you're using, uh, how you're using the outer extensions. Um, I'm happy with the revolution, the resolution being, let's just do the conservative thing. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. It's not that expensive. Um, so I'm happy to, 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 to leave the mechanism as it is and close the issue. That sounds good. Um, are there any objections? Uh, okay. Um, Chris, can you note that in the issue, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Back up. To uh, two sixty two, please. Okay. Um, Chris, I'm just going to turn this over to you uh, to talk about the issue. All righty, hold on a second. Two sixty two. So I was making a general expression mechanism. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, where we basically we want to what we want what the, so the people who have like chimed in on this issue, we all basically agree that 
we would like for the extension compression, compression mechanism to preserve the order of the extensions, which the current mechanism doesn't. Um, so there's a proposal for doing this, and um, we haven't gotten much feedback. Uh, there's some pushback from Martin Thompson. If he's here, he, he, can, he can comment on it. Um, but basically, there's a proposal and, uh, for fixing this, and I'm looking for feedback. I'm waiting for feedback. So your proposal is to have multiple, um, multiple extensions? Yeah, so right now the idea is we have... Um, so this, so this sort of, this sort of, I, this sort of breaks the semantics of, of extensions yeah. as usual. My thinking is that client hello inner isn't a real handshake message. Sure, it's it's something that you need to actually inflate <laughs> and send to the backend server. Um, so sure. I figured that it, it would be okay to violate that rule. Sure. Yes. You're triumphantly reinventing my original design. <laughs> um, um, although my original design, I think, was less. If I understand yours is less was less fancy, and that I only and that each outer extension only corresponded to one uh, extension as opposed to a, a set. Um, um, no, 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 that's what's that's what's going on here actually. So yeah, I went with the simplest, least fancy thing. Oh, so you uh, have triumphantly reinvented my original design. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so, um, what? Okay, so I guess I, I'm not to say this. So, so, you, so, do you have n hashes then? No. Um, so, <clears throat> there's two extension points for this uh, for this mechanism. Okay. There's outer outer extension, and for each uh, for each extension you want to shallow copy into the client hello inner, you replace that extension ah, okay. uh, yeah. with um, that extension point, and then the payload is just the the extension type that's yeah. pointed to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there's and then there's an outer extension, what I call the outer extension binder, which has the right. the hash of the whole client hello inner. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because that was the objection to my design, which is I had n hashes. Um, oh. Uh, which my thesis was, by the way, that like why not? Because you're not. So so my original design was each each hash was the hash of the thing you were plugging in, as opposed to being a total hash. Um, and so um uh, so I think I think the I think the objection was so I think I think the question here is. Um, is, um, is, are there, yeah, yeah. so this seems fine. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure, I, I'll have to check the spelling, but I mean, this seems generally okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd be curious, I mean, because I know that Martin Thompson has, uh, so he's, you know, he, he's suggesting something that actually provides better compression. So this, my mech, the, the current proposal is, is really simple. Um, it only actually provides a benefit if you, compress enough extensions. Um, so there's a threshold that you need to cross um, for it to be valuable, which is worth discussing. And I think the other issue is whether people are going to be fine with using multiple extension points in the same synthetic message. Um, so I, I'd like to see what people think about that. Yeah, I guess I, I, I um, right, I'm not like, I think I think I think the next stage is for someone to actually go through a client hello, like some some candidate client hello, and like see how any of these perform, because for um like like how many like what can actually be compressed. Um, I mean, I would compress key shares, for example, if you're going to have multiple key shares, it's worth it. Right, it's only big, barely worth it though. <laughs> um, I mean, so you're I assume you're using Java fifty six effectively. Uh, f for the hash, you're using whatever, um, you're using whatever KDF HPKE support. Right. So, so we're binding it to K the right. HPKE. So, right. So this is only, so in this scenario where you're offering P256 and, um, and, uh, uh, um, 25519, you save about 50 bytes, right? Right. Um, but I mean, but if you have, if you have a post quantum, like hybrid key exchange, then it is worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think, I guess, I guess, right. So I guess, m m like, when this was, when, so, like, the, I, I feel like we're doing history today. But the way we got here is, like, initially we had a version with no compression at all. And then people were like, what about post-quantum and stuff like that? And I was like, fine, I'll have some compression. <laughs> um, and so I guess, I guess what my, my put would be, 
let's go and look at some candidate examples and see what we're trying to do, and then take the simplest thing that gets this meaningful compression with those candidate examples, right? And if the answer is the only thing worth compressing is key share, and it's only worth doing if you have post quantum, then 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 your design is pretty good, or even my design is pretty good, right? Um, right. Um, so I mean, the, I, mean the, I mean, the rationale for doing the rationale for having something more complicated is if you have a lot of big things, if you have a number of sort of modest sized things, each of which needs to be compressed, right? Um, um, and I think that. Um, and, and so, you know, I just like, I just think like before, like, like rather than sort of designing in a vacuum, we should actually go look and like, see, like a typical client, hello, how many things are going to benefit from this treatment? And it's a good idea. So I'm working on a prototype in Go and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll implement this mechanism and, and see if it makes sense, um, and report back. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, ben, I think you're next. Schwartz. I just want to try to understand whether this is motivated by allowing the representation of arbitrary extension orders, or if there's some other reason why you think the current model is insufficient, because I'm not aware of a reason that we need to be able to represent extensions in an arbitrary order. That's a good question. Um, the thing I worry about is there's already a rule in 8446 that says when, uh, like when, when the when you can send a pre-shared key extension, like in what order in the in the in the client hello. I worry about messing things up if we ch if the the order, like somehow our transformation of uh, client hello inner to compressed client hello inner, if it changes the orders of things, that could change the expectations of the client and mess up me mess up logic on the client side. So basically, I'm worried about ossification of ex around extension order um, on 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 the client side. That, I mean, so that the issue, like, I mean, there, I think that people generally seem that's generally seem to agree that that's a, that's a, that's a safe thing to do. I forget if you, ch if you chimed in on this issue or not. Um, I, I haven't commented on this issue. Uh, if, so if the concern is just about potential ossification due to keys regularly appearing in some order, then, uh, there are lots of different possible solutions to that, um, including like greasing the uh, deterministically greasing the extension order in some way. Um, but then there, there, there's also like like eight four four six makes an ex, uh, uh, like you know it doesn't it doesn't assign the order of extensions except for one. I, I forget which one it was, but I'm pretty sure it's pre shared key. Yeah, it has to appear last. Um, so if you're, if somehow you you if, if somehow your implementation of client hello inner compression messed up that order, then you would end up with a, a non-compliant client. So it's something to be careful of in, for a particular implementation of the of the compression mechanism. I think it makes sense to simplify the spec, and that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming to do with this. It's basically to you know, it's 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 it it's it, it prevents preventing preventing the order of extensions from changing ensures that it it does no logic anywhere else in the stack is screwed up, and that's kind of my aim. Uh, yeah. So I think like to to put my cards on the table. Um, um, my suggestion is, so for all people asking at PSK, um, even if there is PSK, PSK is clearly not compressible because because um, the binders prefer the rest of the, the rest of the handshake. Right. Um, um, so that's like, like that's not going to work anyway. So I'm not worried about that one. So to the extent to which, like, like we should do the research. But if, if the answer is that the only one, the only thing that's really compressible right now in a sensible way is key share, then I propose we just I propose we just go with the simplest thing, which is the thing currently in the spec, and say that. You know, if there are other extensions, it's not to be contiguous. And if we if we have two, then I think we maybe it's worth working on them being being decontiguous. Um, uh, um, so, um, 
Yeah, Ben, AL pin is compressible in some sense, but AL pins are typically very short. And so given that the minimum size of this extension is like, you know, is like four octets, you're not getting much value out of it. You're getting like five bytes. Um, so um, the, uh, um, so I think like, like let's do that research and, and then do that simplest thing. And the thing I would note is that um, this is not like a, an all time commitment in the sense that, um, that because there's an effective, an effectively a negotiation when ECH is done, if we end up with some other extension, then we can just rev the, we can effectively rev the ECH spec or have a way for the server to indicate I speak compression B2 and have some more fancier thing. That's fine. I think one thing um, about like uh, just just requiring the compressed extensions to be contiguous, you want to put the outer extension um, extension in the right order. So uh, if if you're gonna if if you if the extensions are A B C and D and you're gonna compress B and C, then in the the representation of the client in the client hello inner needs to be A, and then Agreed. and then outer extensions for B and C and then D. That right, agree, agree, agreed. And so I guess okay. all I'm saying is, if all you're compressing is key share, it doesn't matter, right? And if you and if you and so like when we introduce compressible extension number two, then implementations can can just choose to serialize that next to key share, right? Um, and so. Um, this only really occurs if we already have a bunch of implementations which serialize in some random order, or if you have, for some reason, extensions which really, which for some reason don't want to be contiguous, right? Like in the same way as uh, same way as PSK, PSK is now. And so I guess what I'm saying is, unless we are, unless we find ourselves in that situation now, like let's like burn the bridge when we come to that. I think that's fair. So I'll see if we, I, mean, I guess like what I'm saying is, like someone should go look some client hellos and like see is there anything else. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take an action to do that with our prototype, um, and we can talk with others who are implementing as well. And then we can report back on the issue to see what's actually useful. All right, uh, we only have a few more minutes left, so let's move on to 297. Uh, Chris, again, I'll turn this over to you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so what's going on here is, um, right, so if the structure of the encrypted client hello, uh, that is the payload that's sent in the outer client hello, um, if that changes, um, then if, if that's changed in future versions of ECH, then th that'll break backwards compatibility because of the because of um, because oh well, hold on a second so because because okay so the there there's a version negotiation for which draft of ECH you want to use and it's based on the version indicated in the configuration so the server indicates which versions it supports. And the client chooses a version effectively. Um, if in future versions the 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 structure of the client encrypted CH structure changes, then uh, that will break that will break backwards compatibility. Um, so I was suggesting we should put the version in the uh, client encrypted CH structure. David Benjamin pointed out why do we need this in the first place, and I I wanted to talk about that. I don't really have an informed opinion on whether it's useful um, to be able to negotiate the version of ECH. Um, so I was wondering if people would uh, uh, would chime in on that. I wish David was here because he brought this up. But um, so I, 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 the, what what you need on the server side is to be able to determine which because the versions and the configs are one to one. You need to be able to determine which config was used. And in order to do that, you need to be able to process the first two fields. Namely the um, namely the cipher suite field to tell you which uh, um, uh, which hash to use, and then the and then the and then the and the next field that has the hash to config, and everything else can be freeform, right? Um, so um, what we're committing to, I mean, what, what, what we're commit what we're committing to now is the um, uh, um, is those first two fields being unch unchangeable. Right, um, and I, think I agree. That, and what you, I think what you're proposing is to be committing something else, which is the first field be unchangeable, be virgin, right? <laughs> um, uh, yes. <laughs> um, so I think I guess like I think I'm with David in the sense that like if we if we really decided we were like sad about like that isn't the first two field structure, um, then we could just invent some new set of code points. Um, um, 
Uh, so um, I, I think I, I am balanced for front remove version, but um, I'm not, I mean, if it, if it were there, and like if we were in last call and it were there, I probably wouldn't fight about it. I think I would agree as well. Like the first two fields being an invariant seems pretty much um, are, are, are pretty sane to me. Um, I don't think it's documented anywhere in particular that like these two, we expect these two to not change, but we could do that. And then if we need to make something new down the line because we want to change the variance, we just use a different code point. Well, very, you know, we, people have discussed various ways of, of indicating which configuration was used. Um, basically like, you know, like Nick Sullivan once proposed, like, let's just, let's have like a super truncated hash, which I guess, I guess is the same, like, you know, it's still a, it's still a config hash technically, but I guess I'm concerned that in order to you know as an as an anti ossification measure, we these might these might change in the future. Um, so like I'm not sure that we want we want to commit to them. Um, I'm happy. I don't see a reason to change them from where I sit. Like it seems like a you know, it, this is like the necessary information for picking the configuration today. We just can't change the way the configuration is, is picked. Um, so if anyone can envision changing that in the future, I think then we should add the version. Uh, I mean, to your point, uh, the proposal from David that Nick was mentioning um, does allow you to truncate because it's variable length. But yes, um, I agree. With the general sentiment, uh, Ben. Ben Schwartz, I don't really understand the ossification concern that you're mentioning here, because the only way that this ever gets used with a future version is with clients and servers that are uh, that are both. Uh, aware of this new version, the, like the server has to advertise a new a, a configuration with the new version, and the client has to uh, has to adopt that one. So, like, who is the ossified party who's who's not playing ball? Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe if there were a middle box that is trying to parse this extension, even though it can't understand it. Uh, maybe that is something to worry about, but well, that is that is that's the issue I was talking about. It's not it's not the client or server. Okay, uh, thanks. That makes the concern a lot clearer to me. Yeah, so I think um, we're we're out of time, and so to respect everybody's time, um, I think we'll call it here and uh, take some of this discussion to the list. I think we'll also uh, try to schedule another one of these in. Uh, in roughly a week, maybe a little bit longer uh, to give Rivet to find a good time or two weeks. Okay, two weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining. And remember to sign the attendance sheets. Thanks all.